Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay and welcome once again to my cabin. Now I thought I would continue my series of my favourite shoes, this time looking at my everyday trainers. Now when I looked at them, I've only really got three everyday trainers in my current rotation that are actually current shoes. So all I thought I'd do first of all is lay out a few more ones that I've used over the last few years so I can do a quick whistles top tour of them. I only rank the three, the ones that I'm using currently that you can actually buy. I don't see much point ranking a shoe that you can't actually buy anymore. So here are today's array of shoes. Now the, the everyday trainers that I use currently are on the left up here. And then I've got some new ones that I haven't actually used yet. And then I've got some other ones that I've kind of used over the past few years. So first of all, let's have a quick look at uh, one that came today, a rather exciting endorphin speed here in the New York colorway. I thought that was rather nice. You even get a New York box. And I've also got the Adios Pro now have come in. I managed to buy them off one of my viewers who decided he wanted to sell them. So that was rather handy. Unfortunately, due to my injury, I haven't managed to wear either of those two shoes yet. So since about 2010, I started using the Adidas Boston as my everyday trainer. As you saw on the last video, that came in more in the Tempo range, but I've laid one out here. A rather knackered Boston 6, which really came up too short. But I used to wear them like all the time, and so I'd rack up about 300 miles in them and get through pairs like they've gone out of fashion. So I must have run thousands of miles in the Boston. After the Boston 7 became just too small for me, that was the 6, which was also too small for me. I sort of abandoned shit for a bit, and then I actually went up to the Supernova Glide 8. Now the Supernova Glide 8 here, this is actually found, I've actually got a brand new pair soon in their box. So I think I got them for about 59 quid a couple of years ago. So whether I'll wear them again, I'm not sure. I quite like these ones. They were sort of like a nice boost shoe without being too much boost like the Ultra Boost, but a bit more to it than the Boston's. And this other shoe here is actually the Supernova ST stability version. I picked that up at an outlet shop. Again, I haven't run in these ones either. I've almost forgotten I had them. So I think they're just basically the stability version of these. But these were discontinued a couple of years ago. I did actually pick up the, the very first pair of the Ultra Boost and I did just under 200 miles of them. I didn't really like them, but I think they were quite good for the treadmill running in the end, I've decided. So when I was in an outlet shop down in Portsmouth, I saw that they had these other Ultra Boost ones here, these sort of beigey color ones. Turns out they're the Ultra Boost 4. So I bought them, and I've done about 60 miles of them, quite a lot of treadmill use in them as well. So as you can see, I haven't actually been outside in them. That's just wear from the treadmill. <laughs> And then after I'd finished in the Supernova Glide 8, largely because I couldn't get them anymore, forgetting that pair that I've got new out of the box. And then I had a spell in Brooks, just to prove that I do have some love for Brooks. So I started off in the Brooks Launch 5, which is kind of so similar to the Boston, I thought. And then I tried the 6 and I had two pairs of them. So here are the Launch 6 ones. This is the first pair I had in there. I've got about 370 miles in them. And then the second pair about 200 miles. And then in more recent times, as I've got more and more shoes, I haven't really sort of stuck to one shoe for everyday training. I've just sort of rotated them around. But I've got three on the end here, which I consider uh, in the everyday class. So I'm basically going to rate those three in the, in the order in which I like them the most. So here are these ones. We've got the orange pair there is the Nova Blast. We've got the Pegasus 37. Now these are actually a, a Nike by U version. So they're actually in a narrow with that sort of uh, colorway that I came up with. And then we've got the New Balance 1080 V10. Okay, so I, I'll pick out my third and least favourite shoe of those three, and I'll bring it up to the computer and have a bit of a closer talk about it. Okay, hello. So of these three shoes, perhaps not too much of a surprise, perhaps, that the third and least favourite shoe of those three is the Nike Pegasus 37. Now, I might argue this is the best-looking shoe, although I did choose the colourway myself, so... Uh, Maybe you might have different views, but I'm a bit of a sort of fiery red and yellow, I thought. Now, the reason I don't like this shoe too much, I think, is probably, as I've already explained in the last video, when the Nike Zoom Fly 3 came last in the Tempo Shoes category, it's just made of this all this React, in this such, such a high stack height of React, which seems like to work quite well in smaller sizes and indeed work quite well in moderation in the Turbo 2. But when they just fill out the whole shoe with, with React, it just seems so heavy and clunky for me. Nowadays, I appreciate a bit more of a softer shoe after the sort of the Turbo 2 and the Endorphin Speed, even some of the sort of the Boost ones, which now seem a bit firmer compared to the more modern foams. But this one just seems like a hard work. I um, mean, I remember the first time I wore it, although I got the narrow version, it still felt like it was quite wide. I, it was the, the toe box, bizarrely, felt like it was really crushing down on me. 
So I've managed to get this Pegasus up to 72 miles and I think I'll continue to use it because it's sort of it's looking a pretty new shoe. I mean the, the, the tread pattern on the back there is all looking good and certainly the, from the front it looks like a brand new shoe. But uh, it just isn't the one that I would reach for an, on everyday training. So it's been a bit of a struggle to even get up to 72 miles. So moving along to my second favourite shoe of these three shoes and this is the New Balance 1080 V10. Now this is quite a close thing between first and second I thought. One advantage of this shoe it comes in lots of different widths so I was able as well as the Pegasus 37 to get this off retail in a narrow size in the UK 13 and a half. New Balance sizing as you might have seen in my other video do seem to come up rather large. So this is like the technically the biggest shoe I've got well at least in actual sizes I don't have any other 13 and a half. So New Balance is the only one I have. Now it does have quite a sort of like a fly knit type material here and even though it's I got the narrow version I still seem to have sunk, sunk down the laces quite a lot as you can see there but that's kind of I think my feet are, is narrow but I think narrow and then some I have to get, do some measurements in another video to work out exactly how narrow it really is but I think I did some measurements once where I thought that my foot was about equivalent to a size 8 but I'm a size 13 so that's why I sometimes struggle in shoes I quite like this one. It's a nice sort of feeling on foot. One thing I did find about it really odd is it has a bit of like a rocking sensation. So every time you sort of move off, it feels like you're sort of on a curve. Now, I know a lot of shoes now sort of have this sort of um, feeling that you're meant to pop up, but this one seemed a bit too much. It felt like I was running on something that was just sort of permanently curved. And I think as a result, I just sometimes felt that was actually making life a bit harder than it, perhaps it should be. And my, another bad experience I had, one day I decided to wear some different socks to what I normally wear, and I only went out for about five miles, and I got a terrible blood blister, which took ages to recover. And I couldn't really quite work out how it happened, but I think it must be just like the sock I wasn't used to. But it rather put me off the shoe, because I think up to that point, I'd already got it almost 100 miles. So it wasn't as if I'd just taken it out of the box and tried out a new one. And in fact, I've just got it up to 94 miles. I think I would have pushed on a lot of further than 100 but I think since that incident I've only worn it twice and it was fine on both times but it's quite a lot of plasticky material here in the toe box around the edges so maybe it must have rubbed on there a bit so a bit wary now of this one so whether I'll wear this one anymore I'm not sure you do lose a bit of confidence in the shoe once you've got a horrendous blister in it so my number one shoe in the everyday category, admittedly only of three shoes that I've got in my current rotation of current shoes, is the Asics Nova Blast, which I'm sure Andy Forrest of Dean and Runner will be pleased to hear. It was certainly his favourite as well, although he's, I think he uses it more for anything really. I think he even does speed sessions in it. Personally, I don't find it that great for speed. I find it's my go-to shoe when I want to just put on a nice comfortable shoe maybe my legs are tied after a session the day before and just eke out some easy miles because it's just so cushioned so just looking at my mileage I've now got this one up to 165 miles which is certainly easier than most of all the mileage I've done in these three shoes so that in itself is a good sign and I think this one will certainly be good for a lot more yet because if you look on the back here there's a bit of signs of wear at the top there but not too bad for 165 miles also another thing about this shoe, it's probably the longest shoe I've got and Asics in a 13 really does come up very long and I think this is probably almost half a size too big for me. I tried it at a 12 in the Roblast and I felt that was a fraction smaller than ideal so one of those times when perhaps a 12 and a half in Asics would be ideal but I think in this one it's so long that I might have got away with a 12. One other downside to it is actually quite a wide shoe. Maybe that's because it's so long. So again, you can see how much I've actually pulled in the laces there, which to the point they're almost touching, even without having the shoe on. So that's a bit of a downside. And the other thing that the other downside was I just find the thing extremely ugly shoe. Maybe in hindsight I should have gone for a different colorway than the orange, but as it seems to don't spend too much attention on their styles. Every shoe seems to be like a sort of monotone. So you, so you seem to get, to get the one main color here, the orange, and then you get a bit of off set with the white and the road blast was kind of similar it was it was basically black with a bit of gray it just seems like rather rather dull but at the end of the day I just need to get out and run in the shoes and how they feel on foot is more important than they look but I must say it's not going to win my uh, vote for the best looking shoe but it's certainly winning my vote for the best shoe to put on just grind out some easy miles and feel like you've refreshed for the next time. It's also reasonably light for this type of shoe. Interestingly, the Nova Blast and the 1080 V10 are almost identical weight at 340 grams each. And the Pegasus 37, even in a narrow shoe, which probably saves about 10 grams when I compared it with Andy Defoe D-Runner, who's got the 
the medium pair, they come in at 362 grams, so quite a lot more. And I think the, the, the standard version would probably come in about 370. So I hope you found this little interlude with my everyday trainers interesting and look forward to seeing you on the next one. I'm almost at 1,000 subscribers now, so maybe a few more videos get me over the line, as it were. I almost feel like it's sort of like a challenge, like a race. It'll be, you know, it's been a goal now that I've been seen for a few months. And I don't make videos just to get subscribers, but it's always nice when people are looking at them and you feel like you know, you're doing something worthwhile and some people are watching and commenting. So it's been great to see all the comments recently because you know, my views may be not the most highest, but I mean, certainly get a, a lot of people commenting on them. So I really appreciate that because it really reassures you that people are looking at them rather than just sort of looking at 10 seconds and moving on. Anyway, thanks once again and see you on the next one. Bye.